like a lot of you folks out there with your own shop and your own garage, I have one of these sweet, sweet central machinery 20 ton presses. Now, it gets used maybe twice a year. And when I need it, it's the only tool that works. But the reason it only gets used a couple times a year, mostly is because it's a pain in the ass to use. It's just, just not set up well. And I'm done. The bottle there uh, finally gave up the ghost. Now, um, I finished what I was doing just as it died. Uh, but what that has done is it's given me the, the want, the will, the desire, if you will, uh, to pimp this bad boy out. To make it an actual tool that I'll actually use more than twice a year. That it will pay for its real estate in my shop. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, um, first of all, I'm going to do some stuff myself to it. I, let me show you. These pins are just scary. They, they are. So I'm going to throw these on the lathe and put some caps on them so that they don't uh, accidentally shift out while under load. And then I'm going to add some casters because moving this thing around, it's just, it's in the way. It's a beast. I got to go find a hand truck or just kind of manhandle it. I think I need a set of casters is what I think. Now to do something about that jack there. How about a little bit of air over hydraulic? I think that'll be nice. Yeah, I do. Sometimes where this is, it takes a lot of a lot of travel in order to get this post down to whatever whatever I'm working with. So I'm actually going to make a couple post extenders uh, for this bad boy here. And now, other than just punching, there's something else that I could do here. I think that'll be real handy when I need to bend up some quarter inch or some three eighth inch bar um, to make some brackets and that sort of thing. I'm always using the uh, the torch and the vise to bend stuff over and occasionally the forge, but I think I can cold bend it with this. Again, trying to make uh, this tool earn its real estate. Oh, I feel like Dr. Frankenstein. I've got, I've got the press up on the welding table. I'm about ready to begin some surgery with electricity. Yes. Yes, I need my own Igor. Yes. So I've got two 22 inch stretchers welded across the bottom. And I went ahead and cleaned these up and just primed the welds. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the casters on and get her stood up. Well, Harbor Freight let me down. I, uh, I went to put these casters on a project that I have going and nope my regular nuts for half inch don't fit after some looking with uh, pitch gauges these are half inch 20 standard like hardware store um, bolts are um, half 13 so yeah I don't have those and I'm not going to the hardware store tonight so I'm going to use another set of casters with a little smaller bolt damn it the original screw holes uh, in the base don't line up with the new jack shocking so I'm um, it could just sit here on this forever but no 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 I, I can't do that so I uh, I popped a, a hole for a quarter inch bolt in and I'll just just for peace of mind put a bolt right there just a little peace of mind yep Here are all the parts laid out and unpacked of my Swag Off-Road 20 ton finger brake press. Um, I got the finger brake instead of the standard because I want to do a little bit more with it than just bend a piece of steel. Um, in addition to the kit, I actually got some gooseneck dies as well that I need to weld up. They, uh, they're sold separately um, and it, it adds the ability to do uh, a little more as far as different seams and and uh, different different bends. So yeah, I got a little bit of welding ahead of me. Let's uh, let's get to getting. And there's the end result. So about two hours of of welding and fitting. One slight note, you'll notice that it's further over on this side. 
Then this side, I spent an inordinate amount of time making sure that these posts were square and putting this piece in to make sure that that piece of angle was good and square and I shifted it over. <laughs> but it still functions just fine. I think this will be a nice welcome addition to the press. I think it'll make it even more functional. I ended up taking one of these sheets and cutting all the tabs and putting together uh, some of the die, uh, the gooseneck die. Uh, I welded up a two, a three, and then cleaned up a one. So I think that uh, this will really add some functionality to the to the brake and the press. Um, I'll get these other three of these done at a later date, but um, I ran out of time tonight. I, I do have another job, like a day job, and <laughs> need to need to get inside and get cleaned up and get ready for bed so that I can be somewhat functional tomorrow. So. Put a little clear coat of polyurethane on the gooseneck dies, just, just cause. And while I was huffing paint, I went ahead and put a coat of paint and finish on the, the new bottom board for the press. Alright, we're spinning nice and true. Now with that pin and the groove and the washer, it makes it super secure to keep the beam and the pin from slipping back and forth either way. One of the things that I've come across while using the brake and the press um, is I, I lose a lot of time and uh, compressed air in, in the travel from the pin uh, onto the brake and then onto the material. So I could mount this here, but I'd still have the same travel time. Um, and still waste the same amount of air. So what I'm going to do is actually make a, a removable extension pin here um, in this space. Um, I've got some, some spare three inch uh, steel rod that was scrap on another project and I've got enough to do the, this one as well as two or three other ones. So I'm going to make uh, this one as well as some in various uh, longer lengths. That way I can remove the brake if need be and leave the uh, the eye beam uh, in place and still be able to use uh, the fu the full functionality of the press. So, so the star is aligned with this one, and I designed it in Autodesk 360 for a work project. We had some scrap stainless steel rod, and our machinist put it on the big boy hardinge lathe. So tapping stainless steel is not my favorite thing in the world, but um, yeah, just take it slow, back it off, and uh, use a, a lot of tap magic, and uh, you'll get through it. May take a couple taps, though. So. All right, just a quick little note. So this Craftsman um, 3816 tap, um, made in China, um, complete and utter shit. <clears throat> this tap, which is also made in China, is not complete and utter shit. This one, I cracked uh, teeth on all four of the bites. Uh, second, uh, second threading, this threaded the exact same material, the exact same depth. I got uh, four holes tapped and nary a uh, dent, ding, or nothing. Still as sharp as it can be. So... Just because it's made in China doesn't mean that it's, it's shit. You can get nice tools made in China. You just have to pay for them. Um, one would think, with the craftsman name on it, that it would be a better tool. But those days are gone and never to be seen again, apparently. Now that uh, those pins are done, I think I would like something to hold, um, to hold them. And uh, I thought about like dropping you know, uh, various ones in here. But what I think I'm going to do is take advantage of these bolts and these holes and then this space here. And I'm going to uh, make a piece to go here that I can drop uh, the, the different pin links in. So let's open up some CAD and do some drawing.
I can't say enough kind things about Send Cut Send. Four days after I sent them the file, this showed up at my door ready to go. And putting the press brake to work already. All bent up and ready to go. Um, I'm going to take and drop a couple of weld beads in here and then uh, clean up the edges with a file, uh, prime it and paint it, and, and it'll install just perfectly. By the way, before I do anything else as far as uh, finishing this bad boy, I did check and make sure uh, it does fit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, that's a lesson learned. For this addition um, and all of the touch up on the press, I used a self etching primer and then the hammered gray, uh, kind of a, a gloss or semi gloss hammered gray. And it matches fairly well. It's not perfect, but it matches fairly well. I'm not gonna lie, getting this on, um, even though it was measured perfectly, was no fun whatsoever. The minute I started loosening these bolts, the beam started to flare even more and it separated out. I had to use four pipe clamps, one giant C clamp, uh, a rubber mallet, and um, some, some dirty, dirty words to get it on, but it's getting there. I am gonna have to touch up the paint though. <laughs> Mount complete and look at there, the pins drop right in just like they're supposed to. And done. I mean, mostly. There's always something extra you want to do or some, some little bit or bob you want to put on. Uh, I appreciate you sticking with me through the whole video um, and the whole build. So my uh, Harbor Freight 20 ton press brake is super useful. I actually used it today to do something. Um, but let me go through what exactly I did in the video. Um, I, I swapped out the existing 20 ton jack for uh, an air over hydraulic 20 ton, which is super much much faster than the, the hand jack and I have a foot pedal um, I'm waiting on some hoses that I ordered from Uncle Jeff on Amazon uh, before uh, before I hook that up but um, I also uh, don't use the uh, the metal handle for the jack to re as the release I I designed a release knob oh, years ago in um, in Creo and printed it out um, actually in PLA put some paint on it and it's been running for two years I had this on the original jack Pulled it off, put it on this one, it works great. Um, I put a, uh, a swag off-road brake together. Now I did go with the finger brake instead of the, the one piece. It's just a lot handier. There's just more you can do with it. Um, more bang for the buck, as it were. Um, I did go ahead and alter the pins. I um, uh, put some of these, uh, these cotter pins on and uh, washers front and back to keep them from slipping because it makes me a little nervous. Um, I did not swap the plates. I probably will swap these out for some some forged um, or uh, some drop forged plates. These are cast because this is a, an older older press. And um, yeah, I've seen the stuff online about them breaking and shattering and possibilities. And I don't think that's going to happen. But just in case, I'm actually going to put uh, another set of, of plates on there when when I get a couple extra bucks. Uh, I did weld a base together and I did put it on casters and uh, the, the plywood base is super handy um, for, for catching crap but also I have a small Bailey 3-in-1 uh, uh, brake, shear, and roller the, for small thin gauge uh, stuff that actually will live there as well. Um, now you did, I did go through the, the extension of this, uh, of this pin so that my uh, jack doesn't have to travel as far and I did, I did uh, three different sizes. Um, now, to, just as a note, I did not make these, another machinist made them, my, my lathe is not capable of making them. Um, and I did use them for a project at my regular job first and uh, after that was done it was kind of a one shot deal and uh, I got to... Uh, Got to bring them home, and they're gonna have a, a new life here. Um, yeah, uh, I'm I'm really happy with it. Uh, again, um, I said that I did use it today, and uh, I put some uh, material storage above the garage door, and we used the brake and uh, bent some quarter inch by inch and a half steel up, and yeah, it worked out great. 
So thanks again. I really appreciate you following along with the whole video. Thanks.